So just to summarize what has happened. So if you've got data frames or tables, those are the two things we have studied. Both of them return vectors when we use the dollar operator. So when we extract a column of either a data frame or a table using the dollar operator, both of them give us a vector as a result. But when you're using the square bracket operator, with the data frame, if you're extracting only one column, you get a vector. If you're extracting more than one column, you get a data frame. With tables, you always get a data frame, whether using the square bracket operator. Whether you're extracting one column or multiple columns, doesn't matter. It's always a data frame. So there's a, there's a greater amount of consistency with tables than with data frames. So here we go about and create a table and notice that we are using a function called triple. Now we'll talk about this function later, but it's just a convenient way of creating a table which is sometimes a little more intuitive than the way in which we used to create data frames earlier. Okay, I won't get further into this. We'll, we'll look at this triple function later, but from the code itself, the way in which I have laid out the code, you can understand that I'm creating a table or a data frame with two columns called A and B, and the column A has values one, two, three, the column B has values A, B, C. So the result, if I type the command tib, is this. It's a table, it's got two columns, and uh, of course, uh, the column types are also shown. When you're using a table, you also see the column types. That's a nice thing. And I'm creating a data frame with the same corresponding values. This time I'm calling it DF. Notice that when you create a data frame, uh, you can create it by indicating the columns and the values of the columns. So the first column is called A, its values are 1, 2, 3. Second column is called B, and its values are A, B, C. Notice how in the case of the function triple, I just had all the values separated by commas. Now this line is just a comment, so it's completely ignored. It doesn't have any uh, role to play in the code itself, just for our visual convenience. But otherwise, notice how I'm able to give all the arguments such as a comma b comma one comma a comma etc etc. Okay. Whereas here we have separated into two columns. The benefit of this is that we are able to visually uh, edit the values, which is a little easier. And this is a data frame. Okay. Of course, we already know that tables and data frames display themselves slightly differently, and that's why you see the difference. So let's create some data and illustrate some principles. So we're going to create a table called tib, right? So tib is the name of the table that we are creating, and we are creating it using a function that we have not encountered before. This fun name of this function is tribble, T-R-I-B-B-L-E, and tribble roughly translates to transposed table, okay? That is, usually when you create a data frame or even a table, you indicate the columns and you indicate for each column what its values are supposed to be, right? So you say, this is a data frame. The first column is called X and its values are these. Second column is called Y and its values are these. That's how you indicate it. And those values themselves are usually indicated by means of vectors. Whereas here, we are creating it quite differently, right? So here we are saying triple and the column names are first given as uh, preceded by tilde. So we're saying tilde A tilde B. Okay, and this is just a comment. And then we're just giving the values by the column. And notice that this column and stuff that we are showing here is completely visual because these are all arguments supported by commas. That's it. Okay, so we're just giving eight arguments which are all separated by commas. That's all we are doing. But because we've given the, when we put a tilde before the name of the column, uh, the system understands you're going to create a column called A and a column called B and then you're giving these values and it automatically assigns one value to this, one value to that, one value to this, etc. and it works out. Okay, so visually this is an easier way to create small tib, uh, tibbles when we want to use them. So if you do this and you type the command tib or uh, type the 
variable name tib, it will show you that this is indeed a table. Okay. Now, one thing about tables that I omitted to point out earlier is that whenever you display a table along with the columns, uh, column names, it will also tell you what kind of data is contained in each column. So, okay. so here it's telling you that the first column consists of numeric values which are double values okay numeric values and the second column consisting consists of character values so that's another additional piece of information that you get when you display a table okay now i'm going to create a data frame with the same exact values this time i'm using the function data dot frame and i'm saying a consists of the values 1 2 3 of course the column a has the values 1 2 3 column b has the values a b c column b has the values a b c Right, so in terms of content, both of these uh, tib and df are identical. Okay, so if you type df, this is what you're going to see, the two columns and the values in the columns. Of course, when you display a data frame, uh, the display of the data frame doesn't tell you anything about what is, what is the type of object contained in each column, whereas a table does. A little bit more useful information. Okay, now that we've got a data frame on a table with identical columns, if I now type tib square bracket 1, now this is something that could be new to you in the sense that whenever we used a data frame or a table and we put square brackets, we always indicate the rows, comma, columns. Okay. If you ignore that and give only one argument, that is treated not as rows, but it's treated as column. Okay. So if I say tib of 1, I get the first column. If I say df of 1, I still get the first column. So df and tib both work the same way when you have square brackets and you indicate only the column. Okay, so now I do df and I get, use the square bracket, but this time I use the row column notation by putting a comma. And as I've already said, if you get one column only using the square bracket notation and the row column format then you'll get back a vector if you get back more than one column using the square bracket notation you get back a data frame and that's an inconsistency that we have already uh, alluded to earlier and if you do the same thing with table uh, as i've already pointed out it's always consistent so when you're using the square bracket notation either you're using the comma or you're not using the comma does not matter with the table you'll always get back a table so as I've said many times, tables are consistent. This is something I alluded to a little bit earlier, which is that when you display a table by typing its name in the command prompt, then the display looks like this. And we've already seen that it tells you, uh, it shows as many columns as will fit on your console. It shows 10 rows by default. It tells you how many more rows are there. Of course, it gives you a count of the dimension rows columns but in addition you also see for every column what is the data type of the object in that column right so it's telling you that the year column is an integer month column is an integer day column is an integer uh, etc okay almost all are integers except that departure delay is taken as a double column double meaning double precision number Okay, which means it could have fractional values, whereas these don't have fractional values. Okay, now how did it figure out that this is a double, whereas these are integers? That's because we're not seeing all the values. Okay, there could be, there are, after all, 336,766 more rows. One of those rows might have a fractional value, we don't know. Okay, so based on some method, it identifies that. And then it tells us how many columns, uh, how many additional columns are there and it tells you about the name of the column and the type of data in that column. So all in all, a better and more useful summary than we were used to getting from data frames. So in this display, we are only seeing integers and doubles as the data types for columns. There are many other data types as well. So integers, doubles, we've already seen. Character, in fact, we did see earlier. DTTM is a date time column. LGL is a logical column, true or false. FCTR, as you can guess, is a factor. And date is just a date without a time included. So that's the difference between 
date time and just a date okay and of course as i've already showed you the additional attributes which are not visible currently are also shown to us so if you do have a data frame you can use the function as underscore table to convert the data frame to a table in other words give it additional properties so again we load the library tidyverse as we've always done so tidyverse when you load tidyverse you end up loading dplyr and you also end up loading ggplot and some other packages so that's why we've formed a practice of just loading the package tidyverse okay so empty cars as you already know is a built-in data frame and if you do head empty cars that's the function to see the first several rows okay that'll that's a data frame so it'll show you the first six rows, I believe. Class empty cars, of course, we know that it's just a regular data frame. But what I'm doing now is saying as underscore table empty cars. And that is I'm converting empty cars into a table and storing the result in a data frame called dat. I could have given it a different name. I could have called it empty cars underscore tib or something. Okay, now when I do dat, it tells me uh, it shows the data in fact this will display now differently that will display like a table because it has now become that is a table as opposed to empty cars which was a data frame so if you try this code out you'll see that the display looks quite different between these two because this is now a table and when you do class that of course you see that it is actually a table and not just a data frame 